What's going on? Welcome to Ajax Reviews. Today we review the third film in the Return of the Living Dead franchise, Return of the Living Dead 3. I do want to remind you guys to make sure and like, comment, and subscribe. Talk to me down in the comments, man. I'm always down to talk to you guys down there. And share the hell out of this with your friends. Directed by Brian Yuzna, having recently witnessed the horrific results of a top secret project to bring the dead back to life, a distraught youth uses the 245 trioxin on his girlfriend after she's killed in a motorcycle accident. So this movie opens up with Colonels Peck, Reynolds, and Sinclair wheeling in a dead body on a gurney into this secret military facility. Hey look, it's Scuzz. For real, that's Brian Peck. So now Kurt Reynolds, no not Burt Reynolds, Kurt Reynolds, who actually, now that I look at him, looks like Edward Furlong and Jeremy London mutated into a single person. Well, him and his girlfriend, Julie, super sexy redheaded girl, break into the secret facility and they witness the reanimation of a corpse. So they go back to Kurt's house for some freaky time, but all Julie can talk about or think about is the dead guy. When that bullet smashed into his skull, the dead guy, I wonder if he could feel anything. Between you and me, I could care less what she was talking about as long as she stayed naked. You know what I mean? So now Colonel Reynolds comes home and tells Kurt that he's being reassigned, that they have to move. Kurt gets pissed off. He don't want none of it because he wants to stay there and keep banging that hot piece of ass in the next room. Kurt and Julie then storm out of the house onto his motorcycle and drive down the road. So now Julie causes a crash because she's grabbing all over Kurt's junk. She smacks face first into a pole, dead. Kurt gets this bright idea that he can use the trioxin to bring her back and everything would be just fine. Oh, yeah. That's exactly how this works. So he sneaks back into the facility, hits her with the gas, she wakes up and seems to be normal. So they barely escape the facility and they're driving and head to a store because Julie's starving. Man, I don't think ho-hos are gonna do it. For real. So they have this run-in with a guy named Santos and his thugs. Santos and the thugs end up robbing the store, shooting the clerk. Julie bites one of the thugs and then realizes she has a taste for flesh and brains. I mean, she could have just taken some Advil. So now Julie starts inflicting pain on herself because she's saying it takes away the pain of the hunger. And then eventually she jumps in the back of the van and starts eating the head off of the store clerk. The store clerk turns and ends up eating a cop before the military shows up to contain him. So Kurt and Julie escape into the sewer where they get into a fight. You brought me back. You should have just left me dead. Kurt gets mad at Julie because she's not the same. Well, duh. She was dead. So then Julie runs away, gets up on top of a bridge, and jumps off in hopes of killing herself. Mm-mm, bitch. You a zombie now. You ain't dying. So Kurt is walking through the sewer looking for Julie's body. He's being followed by a homeless guy who we later know as the Riverman. Uh, they find her body. Santos shows up with his thugs and the Riverman leads them deep into the sewers to help them escape Santos and his thugs. Riverman ends up leading them to the pump room, which is also his house. He leaves Julie and Kurt there and goes outside to keep watch. Then Julie and Kurt get one more freaky time session in as the military and Santos are closing in on them because timing. So after the freaky time, Kurt falls asleep because that's what all men do apparently. Julie ends up transforming herself into super sexy goth zombie and pierces herself from head to toe with anything sharp she can find. Santos eventually catches up to him and finds a sleeping river man. Wake up, Kaka. <laughs> that's another one of those lines, man. It always makes me laugh. Wake up, Kaka. Like, that's fucking great. This time I was actually drinking soda, forgot it was there, spit the shit out, and it went up my nose. So Kurt comes out to help Riverman and ends up getting his ass kicked. 
So now out comes Julie in all her super sexy badassery. I mean, holy shit, look at her. Damn. Now, I'm not gonna lie. Looking like that, I'd hit that like it stole something. Just saying. So Santos thinks he's Mr. Machismo, goes into the room with Julie thinking he's gonna get some. She emerges shortly after with his head in her hand, spine connected to the head and still connected to the body. Uh, she annihilates everybody and then they all turn and chase after her and Kurt. So the military start closing in, they're getting closer and closer, and Riverman and Kurt are boarding up the doors trying to keep Santos and his crew out there. Kurt tells Riverman to take Julie up the ladder up to the street. Eventually he catches up to him and finds that Julie ate Riverman. So then the military show up and contain all the zombies. So back at the secret military facility, Kurt makes his way to the containment area where he sees Julie, Riverman, Santos, all his crew. They're about to be made into weapons. But thanks to Riverman running amok, all the zombies get free. Kurt gets Julie. Kurt ends up getting bit and then they cremate themselves. I feel like that's happened before too. Now it's time for some of the things that I liked about this movie. The main thing I liked is that they didn't try to repeat what the first two movies did. It was a bit more serious even though that comes with its good points and its bad points, it was just a different movie, but it was a good addition to the series. Another thing is they didn't try to overdo the story. They didn't try to give us too much or change things too much. All they did is change the scenario. The effects in the movie were great and Julie and all her sexy badassery was awesome. It was great to see her slow transformation and without doing what she did in this movie, it may not have been so good. Now it's time for some of the things that I disliked. I didn't like the fact that it took this sequel five years to get made. They also spent too much time on Kurt's dad. What is Kurt's dad doing? How close is Kurt's dad? How is Kurt's dad feeling? Kurt's dad trying to explain that he loves his son like no shit, we all love our kids. One thing that I feel that this movie really needed was a little bit of humor. Something to kind of make it feel more like a Return of the Living Dead movie. So in conclusion, this movie is 100% worth a watch. It was fun watching Julie's transformation over time, and this movie does fit into the timeline of the Return of the Living Dead movies. I 100% recommend this movie, and I give it a 4.5 out of 5. So until next time, guys, stay smart, stay clean, keep the dream, don't let the man get you down, because if he does, a super sexy goth zombie might pull your spine out of your ass, and you don't want that. Why? Because it's got bone, and it'll hurt. That's why.